everyone, Kieran Sapien here from Film Storm Studios and today we're going to have a look at creating a rollable game prototype and what we actually have here is um, just basically a flat plane and I've imported the playmaker and the, pretty much the goal of this is to create uh, like a rollable um, kind of objective style game where you pick up coins or pretty much collectibles in order to progress through the environment. Um, you've probably seen a lot of these on like Android kind of games, um, iOS games. Um, uh, some, some, something that rings to mind would be like Marble Blast if you ever used to play that. Um, so we're going to actually have a look at how to create that. So let's get started. Let's create an empty game object and let's call this the player. Whoops, the player. The player. And let's make this 000. Wonderful. Now let's create a sphere. Let's drop that into the player. And let's also zero this guy out and raise him above the floor there. Excellent. Now I made a simple texture just for the ball so we can see uh, the basic shape of him. Uh, and I've also made this the floor material, this nice darker color. So that way I can kind of see what's happening. Excellent. And basically the, um, this texture just comes with Playmaker. It's just this one. So the info one, if you want to put that in, if you have Playmaker. Alrighty, so now let's uh, come back to the ball. And let's just call this the, the, the movement object, the OBJ. Let's create a rigid body. Don't need to change anything. Let's go to FSM. And let's start to make the movement. And Making a ball move is probably the simplest thing you could probably do. So let's have a look. Let's go movement rolling. I did not close that bracket. We need to make it look good. All right, let's go to action browser. Let's say get axis vector. Let's start off with uh, let's start off with a multiplier of five. Let's make the vector the variable a vector three. And let's now get a uh, add force. Good. And we want to say we want to add force to using the vector every frame. All right, let's look at that. And now we've also got our camera up here. As you can see, if we go to the game view, this is uh, kind of what we're viewing. So we want to, uh, let's straighten that up a bit. Let's kind of pick a nice, nice angle. Uh, we're actually going to be changing this up a bit. Let's uh, let's fix up some of these that rotation so it's straight. Um, and let's make it come down a bit. So that would be nice. And now what we want to do is in the player, let's create another empty object and say camera look at. And this camera look at, we want to make an FSM. And we just want to say... Uh, this is going to just be a simple move to. So we're going to say move towards. And we're going to say move towards our movement object. Uh, movement object. Say zero so it never finishes. And now if we press play. The camera's not going to move. We have to link that up. But you can see if I'm moving around using the WS and the um, A the W A S D keys, or you can also use the um, the arrow keys if you prefer that. So at the moment we're kind of getting a nice um, nice movement. We can really tweak this um, later, but here you can see we've got the ball moving around. So that's all well and good. Let's get um, some more stuff happening. Now we want to make the main camera a, um, a parent of the camera look at. So now you'll notice if we move around, we've got. Uh, this nice, this nice kind of view going on. So it's a fixed, fixed camera view, and then we can also set up some triggers in the environment. So let's um, continue building the environment so that way we can actually um, see something. So let's uh, bring down the player. Let's actually come into here and create a folder and call this prefabs. And you can actually just drag in the player straight into here and that will automatically create a prefab for our model. Excellent, so now let's come into the environment and let's do some more building work so that way our ball isn't gonna roll off and we can set some objectives. 
All right, so let's expand this out. Expand it out. Normally, I would um, probably build this in Maya, so that way it's uh, nice and simple uh, to get started. And you can pretty much just import the geometry, and voila, you're, you're there to go, ready to go. So let's. Um, I'm gonna kind of make like a little gate here, and then we'll continue building uh, the game world out there. All right, now let's just duplicate this and rotate that. That's gonna be at a 90 degree angle. So that's gonna be good. And let's bring this guy in here. All right, so now if we press play and we move, you'll notice that the ball can't go out. So it's kind of feeling a little bit slow at the moment. So let's um, jump in here and let's pump up the multiplier. So this will actually just increase the values that it's running at. So if I press play. So that's feeling quite nice. Except now you're seeing it's kind of becoming a little bit choppy. And this is basically because the um, that look at um, isn't fast enough to keep up with the ball. So to fix that, I'm gonna come to camera look at, and bring this back out. And we wanna say the max speed is 30. And now you'll notice it will be really nice and the ball won't get lost. Okay, so now we've got these nice physics going on. Um, if you want to, if you want the floor to be a bit more grippy, uh, we can come to the ball, to the ball, and let's come to here, and we can actually. Uh, I think we need to actually set up a physic material for the, the floor, so we can do that. Let's come and create a physic material. I'm going to say a uh, grippy, grippy floor. So this way we have a bit more friction on the floor. And we want to drag this up into the physic material. And now you have all these really nice things. So now if we play, oh, that feels that feels a lot better. So we're actually it feels like we're actually gripping gripping the floor a bit better. Excellent. But now that now that we're gripping that, we probably want to um, let's bring that down to 0.3. Okay, so we want we want 0.6 and 0.3. I think that's quite a nice combination. All right, so let's bring this out. Let's create like a ramp. So we can test the ramp out to make sure that that's going to work correctly. And then we will come back in and set up some objectives. Okay, so we're not splitting anything. Okay, looks good. So we want to make sure that we have enough energy. Okay, that's good. So it's going to just be enough to get, get you there. So you, the player might realize he might need a bit of a run up to, to get up. Okay, that should be great. I'm stopping at the top, by the way. So that should be good. Um, I actually really want to just maybe bring this down a little bit more. Let's make it 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Okay, that should be good. Excellent, so let's start. Uh, let's actually build the little ramps so our player can't go off the side here. Now let's make that, that 90 and let's rotate that one up. And I believe this is probably gonna be minus 25. This looks like roughly around what it is. All right, so let's uh, expand this one out. And that looks good. And that looks good. And now let's pretty much just duplicate these four. Uh, and this one, plus the floor, duplicate. And let's bring this guy up here. It's going to be a fairly simple level just so we can um, look at the different techniques that we'll be using to create it. And let's basically just do a switcheroo with these ones. 
cool. And let's pull this out. Excellent. Now I just need to adjust the height of this one. And make it join up a little bit nicer. Okay, that looks looking good. Okay, that looks great. Okay, now let's just extend this out a little bit more. Bring it in a little bit. And extend that a little bit more. Okay, so now if we press play, we've got this area, and then we've got this second area. So now we need some sort of um, some sort of objective system. So let's let's create something. So let's uh, make a new empty object, and let's call this Enviro. I did not spell that right at all. Enviro. <laughs> let's just drag all of these guys in here, and also our plane. So if we need to move our environment around, everything's all connected. So we can pull that up and that's excellent. So let's create an object. Now what's a funky object we've got? Let's a uh, cylinder, plane, quad. Uh, what do we got? Let's make a cube. And let's just make some, some like weird shape by moving them around. Cool. All right. Now we need something that's gonna kind of stand out. So let's make it a little bit thinner. Good. I mean, really you could make your own custom object and then um, do that so is that going to be very noticeable when we're playing okay so excellent so that's going to be good even i might even just make it a little bit not as crazy crazy wide let's just do that do that okay excellent okay so let's now create an empty object and we're going to call this um, collectible. Let's make it at zero zero, and we're gonna move all of these uh, pretty much right into the middle because we want these to also be uh, right there. And then let's hook that up. Okay, so we basically made a simple collectible. These we're not gonna have. A, a box collider, we're really just gonna have a trigger. We can even just turn that off because I, th I thought of a different way we could do it. Um, let's just turn off all the box colliders for these guys. Good, and then let's make a, another basic cube that basically encompasses the whole thing. And let's say is trigger turn off mesh renderer. So basically whenever the player goes through, they'll have this invisible box, right? So if they go through this invisible box, it will count as them collecting it. So we need to create some code to do that. So let's call that one the trigger. And we're gonna say create a tag. And let's just make the tag a collectible just for future if we need to um, say what are we what are we hitting we can do that okay so let's make a FSM gonna call that collectible just so we can see if this is gonna work and then we're gonna say uh, waiting and we could even do a little bit of a rotate and we could say rotate per second uh, 20. Let's see, are they going to make them rotate? It's going to make that rotate. We want to make 
the collectible rotate. There you go. So we can speed that up. We can make that like 30. 30 looks okay. Excellent. So if we're in the game view, you'll be going around, you'll be like, okay, so that's a collectible, I need to get that. We'll go through it. We need to say, add a global transition. We want to say trigger enter. I think you can't use global because that's gonna be on the top. We want to say add transition system and then trigger. So that bottom one, uh, let's create that. And we're gonna say, triggered and we want to say we want to probably do a float count so we can um so we can send that to somewhere else so we need to set that up as well so we can set up our little ui system so let's bring that in collapse that we want to uh, create a ui and let's say text go game uh, for the canvas, we want to say pretty much world space is fine. Let's say scale screen size so we know what's happening with that. Say, yeah, say match that one. Okay, so make that zero. Uh, let's go back to here and press F so we can see this. This is basically the screen. Okay, so let's in here. Okay, we're gonna say collect. Um, we're gonna say collected something. So let's leave that of five. Okay, excellent. And now let's. I want to make the font just white so it's easier to see. Uh, and let's say overflow and overflow. And let's increase. I like to increase the font size. It's my personal preference, and then scale it back down, uh, and then that way you'll get nice, nice crisp text. Um, might actually just put it uh, bottom, bottom right here. Okay, so you hit play. Now we've got the the UI um, on the screen, and you see you've got that other thing moving around. So what we want to do is once we we go through here, you'll notice it will stop rotating because we've triggered that other. Um, part and then we need to say um, tell it to send a float value um, to here or an integer to say we've collected one of this these five so let's create we're going to call this just the um, objective and let's create a, another text I might actually just put a little couple of extra spaces in there and let's just make that 270 no, just so it's over a little bit more. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to create UI text. Sorry, I might actually just, what even will be easier is just to duplicate that and then say um, collected. So this is how many we've collected. And we could just put a hashtag in. I don't even know whether hashtag, my hashtag is apparently turning into a pound. So let's just say equals, I don't know why mine has changed. Uh, let's go scene, F, bring this guy in to here. So that way we're gonna basically change this number to whatever it is. So let's just make it zero for now. So you'll see how this is gonna work in a second. So we collected zero or five. So let's come into our collectible again, our trigger. Let's come to the trigger. We're gonna say add or set or add float. Good. Okay, so let's add this float and we're gonna basically say Oh, actually, no, probably a better way to do that would be we need to set up on the canvas would be to set up actually the objective. Yeah, the objective would be better. Okay, so let's go to the objective, set up a FSM and call this the 
objective collector counter. So that way, that way we can actually see how many um, is getting collected. That way we have a central database. So let's create a integer, and we're going to call this collected. And at the start, we're going to say uh, set integer value. We're going to set that as zero. So at the start of every game, it's going to be zero collected. We're going to then create a state saying one collected. So basically we're saying, okay, one has been collected. Now we need to create a um, global transition for that. So let's come to events. We're going to say um, add one. Click the box. It's going to make a global transition. Right mouse click, add one. Okay. And we're going to say add our integer. And we're just going to add one to the collected. And then once that's done, we're going to say finished. And then we're going to make this state uh, just waiting. So basically nothing's happening. And we're going to call this the start. Okay, so now if we come to here, oh, and basically after this one has been collected, we need to say, uh, or say this set property, and we want to set the text string to a new value. So we need to say, we need to change the integer to a string. So we want to say convert integer to string, and move that above here. We're going to say the collected to a new variable. We're going to call this the collected string. So basically you can't just show a integer or float in uh, UI because UIs um, you only use strings and a string is basically just straight text or numbers. That's basically what you type into the computer uh, and then the computer would convert that into uh, whatever you're viewing, which is normally a string. So we want to uh, convert that. The format is fine. We want to say every frame. We want to set the value to the collected string every frame, just to make sure. That should be all pretty good. So now we just need to set our trigger to send an event to a game object. We want to set this to our objective. We want to say add one. And when that is finished, we can say destroy object. We want to destroy the collectible because it has been collected. All right, so now let's drag in here. Let's create a prefab or a folder. We're going to call this prefabs. And also save our scene. We're going to call this the marble scene. We're going to our prefabs. Let's drag the collectible. And if you click here, you'll see this is uh, that's the box that we created outside, so we know that's working. Let's also drag our player in here. Wonderful. All right, so I think we're pretty pretty good to test this. Let's press play. Excellent. But I actually set the um, for it to change the wrong uh, string. As you notice, it changed this one. So we need to come into here. My mistake. Let's change this property let's say lock and I just want to click collected if you click lock um, you'll notice if I didn't click that and I clicked it will take me to nothing so you make sure you have that click lock click here and then drag in this text now it should work okay voila we have collected one of five and then once we place some more so let's duplicate this, come to our scene view, press F. Let's make one over here. Uh, let's make one kind of half, half here. And let's make one up here. Is that five? I don't know. Should be. So we got one. There's another one. Two. 
Oh, missed it. Three. If we get enough run up. Oh, but apparently I can't count. Four. Okay, so let's um, make one more. And this will actually be a good time to do an extra little thing. Let's um, let's also make one little part of this a bit challenging. So let's um, bring this in. You'll see in a second. Okay, and do that. And I duplicated that, so let's make this small as well. And bring this in. Very good. Now what we're going to do is duplicate this, because it's the same angle. And we're going to have a little bit of a, like a risk reward kind of thing going on here. So let's oh, bring this in now. Close that up. Close that up. Close and close that up. Okay. Let's just check that the ball will fit through here. Good. Okay. That should be good. Now we're going to put a collectible. Uh, let's make this collectible. Let's put one. Let's put one here as well. So the player is going to be like, oh, okay, we're going to have to, we're going to have to go down through here to get that other one. Okay, so let's come down through here, and we're going to have to make a full death one as well. So let's also set that up. So let's create a a, a sorry a cube. And let's also chuck that into the Enviro one. And we're going to call this the death zone. And let's extend this out nice and big. We're going to do this the same way as we did the, uh, the other trigger. So we're going to place this under the environment. We're going to make is trigger turn off the mesh renderer. So if the player falls through here, we're going to trigger a death zone. I'm going to say FSM, I'm going to call this the death zone restart. Good. Now we're going to say wait. And we're going to say new custom system event trigger enter. If we trigger enter, we're going to restart the level. So let's restart level. Good. Let's test this out. Press play. So if the player happened to fall off, oh, good, and you'll notice it did this because uh, the lighting hasn't been baked. So uh, when you restart a level, you need to have make sure your lighting has been baked at least once. So we can sort that out later. But for the general time being, that is good. We've got five now. So now let's come back to our objective. And let's come back to our counter. And in our waiting, we're going to do a integer test or a integer compare, sorry, I think that's what it's called. We don't want to expand it. Let's close that. We're going to say if our collected is equal to five, we're going to say completed level. Completed level, let's come into here. Say level complete so we're going to say if it is equal we're going to say completed level well done and then we can create a new uh, objective and we're going to call this oh, we're just going to say completed level let's uh, press F what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this kind of just like a nice big level complete. Good. Make that nice and big. Cool. And we're actually going to say, because this is going to be hidden, we're going to say uh, enable 
uh, or activate, I believe it's activate, activate game object. I'm going to say activate the completed level. We're going to uh, just copy and paste that. We're going to then say these two and the objective. We're going to turn them off. Good. Okay. Let's give this a run and let's turn off the gizmos. So we got one, we got two, and we can still refine the controls a bit later. Okay, three, four, I still didn't count properly apparently. <laughs> Five, okay, let's, uh, let's just get rid of that other one. Let's try this again. We got one, two, and three, four, and uh, let's make sure we line this up. Don't want to restart the level. And five, level complete. Yay! And then you can say, uh, once that's done and you make another one, we can go level complete, wait, wait for three seconds, add transition finished. So on that, we're going to say finished, and then we can say load level. Um, and you can give it a level number. So you can see, you come file, build settings, and we say add open scene. This is uh, the scene number. So if we create our next level and we call it uh, marble scene two, or marble scene one, because I guess it will be different, and then that will give it a one. And when we come into here, we can say load level one. So that will load our next level. And then we can say destroy, do whatever you want. Um, and then we'll be good. So you'll notice if I do it now, it's going to be like, hey, it probably won't like it because it, there's not going to be any level uh, number associated with it. But we can quickly run through this. Come into here. Okay. And come down here. Cool, one, two, three, and it's probably not going to do anything because there is no, it, there's nothing for it to load. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what we, all, we can actually test it. Let's save it. Let's come in here, let's copy. Can we duplicate this in any way? Uh, edit. Duplicate. Okay, so let's call this second level. Okay, and what we can do is just to, to check it out. Let's just move this up here. Let's move this here. We could move. Uh, let's make this one kind of come. I can actually click it. <laughs> there we go. Let's bring that down there. So that way we, we know this looks different than the first level, okay? So let's come file, build settings, add open scene. So this is level one now. Let's come into da, 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 da. so we need to save this now. Come back to our first level. Uh, come to our canvas where our objective system is. And we're going to say load level one, loaded event, do whatever you want. So we're going to load level one. So that should be, should be good. So if we go file, build settings, theoretically, this should be good. So let's say, okay, two, up, 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 up. three, 
we've got four. And let's grab this fifth one. Okay. All right, let's see. Did anything that look like anything happened? One, two, three. Okay, well, it, it seems like it, this one didn't work. So let's, uh, let me try this other one. Load level. Let's just, uh, for, to make sure. Load marble scene second level. Yeah, that should be that should be fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm gonna just keep this open down here, just so I can keep an eye on it, so we can debug what's happening. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Ah, uh, okay. That's what's happening. That's what's wrong. So when this one, when we deactivated it, that's the one that actually has the um, the thing. So we need to just say turn off the script. So which one's that? The objective. So it would have worked in the first the first time. So let's turn that off, and we just want to say for the objective instead to set this as enabled. And that should fix that. Okay, so now now it should definitely should definitely work because before it was just turning off the the FSM before it could even um, run uh, the problem. And this is like this is pretty much what game development is. It's all about if you you change one little thing and then you don't realize what it is and then you have to look back through everything to to make sure what's gone wrong. One, two, three. All right, and then this is that second level because you noticed that uh, this is that. Um, the the objects have changed. Uh, and as again, the lighting hasn't been baked. So let's have a look at how that works. So basically for baking lighting, you need to have static objects. So let's come in and static objects have to be things that don't move. So basically background um, background objects. Uh, cancel, we don't want that. Okay. Well, basically, all of the enviro can be static. And as you can see down here, it's um, baking the lighting. And we just wait for that guy to, to run. And you can even come into here, and you can see that. Um, we've got everything in here, which is good. Um, you can even say, I would save it, and you can say build. And that's also a quick way to um, build lighting as well. I find the, although the Unity lighting system can sometimes be a quite frustrating <laughs> as to what it wants from you. Um, it doesn't really, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it's, it's always a bit finicky. Let's just wait for that to build. Okay, transporting, three, two, one. Okay, good. So it looks like it's baked, so save. If we come back to the first one, we press play now. Let's test this out. It should load the um, the saved uh, bake data for the, the level now. Four and five. One, two, three. Excellent. So there you go. So now, um, because we baked the lighting, uh, that makes a big difference. So that way, uh, you'll notice if we die, 
Now, if we jump off here, and then it resets, um, it keeps the lighting. So that's how you um, get around that problem. And something else I like to do, um, you can even do it with image effects and stuff to enhance it, um, but I, f I find really helps sell it, and you'll probably do this in Uni um, in Maya, is I love to have some parallaxing going on in the background. So this, um, this really helps make a game feel a bit more. Um, like it kind of, it's not really professional, but yeah, it gives it a bit of polish. So let's say create. Let's just call it this materials. Oops, and you see in here it's um, saved our lighting data. Um, let's just create a back background, and let's chuck that on. So it's not just bright white. And I want to make this like a just something, something in the background that's going to stand out. But you see how that kind of helps sell um, the nice environment. And I'm sure if you have proper um, models and stuff, it's going to really um, bring it bring it alive. You can really just do whatever you want. It can be like some sort of buildings and stuff that are connected together. Something that the player is not going to really look at, but it helps um, sell the world that you're going to be building. So you can just do some stuff like that. And because it's if your game's going to be a fixed game like this one, where the camera doesn't really move, uh, it's going to be really nice uh, to, for, for the actual thing. So let's just do some quick little just details. Let's just bring some of this in. Okay. So then you can see you've got some some multi-dimensional uh, parallaxing going on in the environment. And if you get uh, some image effects, uh, you can put some depth of field and stuff on, and that's going to really help uh, sell the world. And of course, see how it kind of ends underneath there. You're going to have to do some 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 modeling in here just to kind of help uh, break that down, so players can't see see through that. So when they're going through, it, you could have like a little bustling, bustling city or something going on down here. So that way they can see, and you can even see the shadow, which helps kind of give the place a little bit more scale as well. So it's just it's little touches like that. Um, sound design will also be a big thing. So you can put some sound while the ball is rolling. Um, but I think pretty much for for this, this has been. Um, well, I'm pretty happy with um, what we created so far. We pretty much created a, a perfect little mini game uh, together. And this is pretty much fully expandable, so you can do whatever you like. You can really make heaps of objectives. You could make the same using the triggers. You could make triggers that open doors, uh, hidden areas into the world and stuff. So it's really just using your imagination to create what you want and really expand uh, this game environment. So. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you found this um, interesting, and I'm sorry it's um, I've taken so long to make more tutorials, I've been really busy trying to get all this other stuff happening, uh, and other game development projects, but I really hope that uh, you find this interesting, of course, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try and answer them for you, and I promise the next video I do will be um, completing that GDA tutorial series. Um, I pretty much have it done. I just wanted to make it a bit more simple. It kind of, I kind of ranted on, raved for a while in it, so I'm kind of just editing that down. So, hope you enjoy this. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. See ya.